Hey guys, Javert here for HitFilm. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the particle simulator to create a storm cloud. This technique is the same one that I used to create the Halo jump sequence, which is a recreation of the 2014 Godzilla scene. We'll be using HitFilm Pro for this, and you can learn more about that on our website. Let's jump right into the software and get started. We'll start by dragging the particle simulator into the timeline. In the controls panel, change the shape to cube. A little bit further down, increase the height and width to cover the screen. You'll now notice that particles spawn all across the visible area, instead of from a single point. Down in the movement category, increase the life to 60 to prevent the particles from disappearing. In appearance, change the texture source to built in, and then choose the missile smoke texture. Increase the scale to your liking. Set the speed to zero so that they don't move. The particles are still spawning throughout the duration of the shot. Come up here to particles per second and activate keyframes. Skip forward one frame and set it to zero. We want them to be on screen when the shot starts. Back up in the general dropdown, set the time shift to negative one second. Let's mix up the look of the particles a little bit. I'll start in appearance variation. The texture angle rotates them individually, so that they don't all look exactly the same. The texture angle per second adds spin to the particles. Depending on your scene, this may or may not be what you want. Keep this low so that there is a little bit of movement. Now that we've got the particles all set up, it's time to add some light. Go ahead and create one from the new layer panel. In the properties, change the type to ambient. This will serve as the base light, to make sure that the cloud doesn't go completely black. We'll create another light, and this time leave it as a point. Grab the blue arrow control and raise it up a bit to be over the clouds. Lower the intensity as needed. This light is going to be used for the lightning flashes. Let's have the intensity start at zero, and activate keyframing. Skip a few frames forward, raise the intensity, move another few frames, and put it back down to zero. Down in the timeline, I can highlight these keyframes, set them to smooth, and copy them throughout the scene. Move them around and space them out differently to add variation. Now we're going to keyframe the position. I'll set it up here to start then move to right before the next flash. Grab the light in the viewer, or use the position coordinates to put it in a new spot. And finally, before the third flash, I'll put it somewhere else. Highlight these keyframes and set them to constant. This means that instead of traveling between two points, the light will jump to each spot only when the keyframe happens. This avoids the light appearing to drag across the screen. If you want, change the color to blue. Once you get this light set up, you can duplicate it and change around the position and intensity keyframes for a different look. A 3D camera was automatically created when we made the first light. Go into the controls panel and activate keyframes for the position. Skip to the end of the timeline and move the Z position inwards to give the impression of falling towards the clouds. If your clouds are looking too uniform in terms of color, what you can do is select the particle system and come up to the lifetime panel. Scroll down to color, and under type, choose random. Click just under the bar to add a new color point. Click it to expand the color wheel and make it dark gray. What this means is that each individual particle for the cloud can be any color that exists on this bar. You can add as many colors as you like, but in this case, I want the particles to be shades of gray. Now we have light and dark ones. The final grade is what brings everything together. A diffuse effect is useful for slightly blurring all of the colors. The farther away an object in your scene is, 
the more likely it is to be diffused heavily. Next up is the glow effect. Set the blend to add and raise the radius. Lower the threshold so that more of the clouds are affected. Drop an anamorphic lens flare effect onto the grade. In the controls panel under Streak 1, I can change the orientation to horizontal. Uncheck Vertical Pivot to put it directly on the light source. For this shot, I'll increase the length. It is of course up to you to decide how bright these flares are. In this case, I'm going to keep them pretty subtle. And that's how I created the storm clouds for the halo jump. There were a couple of shots where the view is from the side as the soldiers fall. You can make this happen with just a few changes. First, stop the camera movement by resetting the position. In the particle settings, change the trajectory to cone so that they move in one direction. Set the Z rotation to negative 90 to have them move upwards. You'll notice that they're not moving at all though. That's because we set the speed to zero earlier on. Let's change that to something like 2000. We also keyframe the particles per second. Reset that and set it to 250. And there you have it, a very quick falling side view. You can of course tweak the settings to your needs, but this was just an example. And that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified about all our new content. We've got a couple more Halo Jump videos coming out very soon, but in the meantime, be sure to check out HitFilm Pro on our website. There are a lot of great features that have been added in. Until next time, thanks for watching.